Hi, this is Chris from codereviewvideos.com and in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can use Presta Sitemap Bundle to add a Google Webmaster Tools friendly sitemap to our Symfony 2 projects. So if you've used WordPress or similar in the past, you've probably come across plugins like Yoast plugin, uh, which allow you to, as far as I remember anyway, generate a sitemap for your WordPress site with pretty much one click install and then just let it do its thing and take the result in sitemap.xml and submit it off to Google Webmaster Tools and, and you're good to go. It's not quite as straightforward in Symfony, but it's not particularly difficult either. Um, thanks to this great bundle by Alain Flaus, I hope that's how we pronounce it. Um, it's down the bottom there. Uh, so yeah, the, the gist of it is we install it as we would do any other bundle. Just add it to our composer.json and add the press the sitemap bundle into our registered bundles. And then we need to add in the roots. So I've gone ahead and done the first two pieces as I'm sure those are um, more than within your grasp at this stage. Uh, the other thing is I've added in Will Duran's Faker bundle so that we can generate some fake data. And just to go through the project structure, it's just a very simple project, Symphony 2 uh, default install with a, a few little bits added in, Symphony 2.6 that is. Uh, I've got comments and posts, it could be a blog, could be a forum, uh, it doesn't really matter. And then I've used um, the Faker bundle to generate some fake data, so five fake posts with 17 fake comments. And that's pretty much it. That will give us everything that we need uh, to be able to display our routes um, or to display our sitemap based on our routes. Uh, and this will cover everything that we really need in a, in a real world project as well. So with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste in this section here uh, just to show you as well, added in the bundles and whatnot. Uh, and then if we go into the config, into our routing, and then because it's a third party bundle, I'm just going to stick it at the top there. And then if we go in here, we can see that we get these two routes. Uh, so basically we will have sitemap.xml and also sitemap.default.xml. It's just the way that this bundle is set up. So we've got sitemap.default.xml and at the moment that's doing uh, just display in our homepage. I'll show you why in a sec. And then the sitemap.xml just points to that sitemap.default. Slightly strange setup, but there we go. We've got the last modified, which is now. So keep refreshing it, that'll keep updating. And we can change these bits should we wish to. So the first type of route that we've got set up, if we look at our default controller, I've gone ahead and added this one in. Uh, this is just like a uh, an annotation that we can put in. And this will just tell um, Presta Sitemap Bundle that this route exists. So it's not gonna go off and look at your routes manually, uh, sorry, it's not going to go off and look at them automatically. We have to be manually telling uh, Press the Sitemap Bundle about our routes. So again, we can add this one in. It's pretty, this is a static route, so there's nothing really going on there other than, um, well, no dynamic content. So we add that in, and again, we can go in and change these things up uh, a little bit. If we look in the documentation, there's, there's various ways that we can change the annotations. So you can see that I've just copied that bit in. And then if we look in using usage of annotations, uh, we can add in stuff like the priority and the change frequency. So let's just change that up a little bit so that we can see that in action on this second one. Okay, so far so good, but that's the easy bit really. That adding the annotations is not difficult by any means. The next step is a little bit more involved and we need to go ahead and set up this event listener. Now, this is where the instructions sort of stop just where you, you would need them. So that's why I felt like I should do this video. The first thing that we're gonna do is I just add in the service. So I've just pasted that piece there into services.yaml. I'm just gonna tidy this up a little bit and not use this class um, as a parameter. In the new best practices of Symphony 2.6, they, they don't recommend doing that. So I'll just tidy this up. So I've just tidied that up there a little bit. And the reason that they actually don't spe uh, suggest that you use a class with a parameter like that is it adds a little bit more complication to it. Uh, and it doesn't really add anything to your project if you're not going to be sharing it. However, if you are going to be sharing it, then feel free to stick with those uh, parameter based classes like that. So let's just add that file in. So it's literally just created the event listener sitemap listener. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything from their sitemap listener into ours. So I've gone ahead and pasted that in, changed up the namespace to match our namespace. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is identical. We're passing in the router from the service. That's the um, the tag that we're listening for, so the event that we're listening for. And then when that event is triggered, we should, in theory, run the populate sitemap function. 
which is going to look for the section. The section is most likely going to be null. So we hit this is null section um, branch and then we get the absolute URL of the home page. So we use the router to generate the home page. That home page root is literally from there. So that's just PHP um, app console router debug. We can see that the home page named root will resolve to just the slash. So that will generate the absolute path of our root of our web page. Then it adds the home page URL to the default set. And by that, it takes in this URL concrete takes in the URL. It takes in a date time that which will be used in the in the um, the last modified date there. Then the change frequency. So this has various ones in there um, which we can use. And then this would be the priority, which is between 0 0.1 and uh, 1 or 1 1.0. And that's the priority that we can assign to this specific um, URL in our sitemap. So that's more for your internal changes. It's not hugely paid attention to by the search engines as far as I'm aware, but it's useful to have. OK, so now that we've added in this listener, when we refresh our sitemap, we can see that we actually get the home page uh, route executed or displayed twice, one hourly, one daily. So the reason for that being here, we've added in the hourly route and in our actual controller, we've added in the annotation to tell us that we want the, the, the sitemap with the default, which is daily. OK, so so far, so good. What we're going to do is just remove either that one or this one out to stop this from displaying twice. So the way that I'm going to do it in this one is just to remove it from here. And then we're going to look at how now that we've let's just double check that we are definitely back to two routes. Yep. What we can do now is actually get to the, the sort of the interesting piece of this, I suppose, which is to display the stuff from our database.